Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You are almost better than the first service at saying good morning back. And they had double the attendance, so let's be ready. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. I'm glad that um, you're able to join us today, whether here in person or those watching online at this time. Uh, we continue to uh, slowly progress in COVID regulations. So if you did not get the message, and like I said in the first group, it seems like you all did, you do not need to wear your mask while you're seated. We do ask that you wear them when you come in and go out or if you're coughing around other people. Um, but we're just glad you're here. Quick question, quick survey from you who are here. If we decided to merge into one service beginning next week, would you all be okay with it? And be honest. Yeah. Okay. 10.30. 10 Oh, so now we got to fight between 9 and 10.30. You can get up early with us, 9 a.m. Um, 9 a.m., and if you're not here two weeks in a row, then i got to have another 10.30 service. Yeah, you can wear your jammies, bring your coffee, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that with the church council this week, and that may be our move. Um, but if things progress and we see next week that maybe that service is too big, that maybe we'll go back to. So, uh, make it a 10? 9.45, okay, anybody else? I'll make this deal. Whoever puts the most money in the offering plate, no. Okay, just stay tuned. We'll try to get the word out there. It'll be sometime between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. <laughs> or watch online. Um, a couple of announcements to share. A reminder, if you have children, and this applies to children of any age, even you older youths, Vacation Bible School. Um, in the middle of July, towards the end of July, we'll all be virtual, online, um, take-home type stuff. It's not going to be just kiddies for the little kids, you young youth peoples. We're going to have some fun things for the older kids to do, too, um, to be a part of it. Um, I encourage you to just try it, see if you enjoy it. It might include making a TikTok video for me, um, something else like that, but we're going to see what we can do. I announced this morning we have online registration through our website. We got our first registration turned in from a person in Oklahoma. So <clears throat> don't know how that works, but maybe it's a relative of somebody's. I don't know, but it's good. We're hoping to, to be able to reach out and to bring the word of God to children and youth all over. And if you're an, an older adult youth and you'd like to do it, I can try to figure out something for you older folks. I don't know. Jan, get working on that during the service. Next Thursday, not this Thursday, but June 25th, we're going to have a youth um, taco, nacho bar night, and movie um, at 5.30. So you can join us here at the church. We're going to have a movie on the screen with a big sound effect, something a little bit more appropriate than the Halloween's movie. Um, but an opportunity for you to bring your friends and enjoy company with each other and to enjoy some fellowship. Um, additionally, I didn't have this in the bulletin, but we're working on having a camping night uh, where anyone can bring their campers, their tents, their RVs, or just want to sleep out in a sleeping bag under the stars. Um, probably in August, we're working on a date out in the yard over there um, just to encourage fellowship. Also, we're planning a youth tubing event. Uh, so stay tuned for more information. We want to give you all something to do during the summer. Are there any announcements from you? All except for more time suggestions for church? No? Okay. If not, I'm going to begin with the call to worship and our opening prayer. The psalmist declares in Psalm 34, H, 34 8, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Let us pray. Once again, you have brought us into your presence, almighty and holy God. While some of us have gathered here in the sanctuary, there are others gathered in online places through their living rooms, their dens, perhaps their back patios. But wherever we are, may we join together in spirit to encourage one another and to strengthen our faith so that we can strive to become children that want to live holy lives, to please you in all that we say and do. May the words from scripture and may the music that is played 
bring us a time of uplifting encouragement where we can be refreshed in our souls and that we can go on and continue in life reminded that we belong to you, our Heavenly Creator. Amen. Zoe, your turn. Thank you again for providing today's special music. As we turn to our time of prayer and remembering and lifting up those in our church family and in our communities, if you have a bulletin, I would direct you to the list of those we've been praying for. We have a couple of updates and a couple of additions. Um, as we continue to pray for Gary Eckhoff, uh, Gary is scheduled to have a, se a surgery this Thursday. Um, we just pray that some tests and some other issues that he's going through, that everything will be clear and that he'll be able to continue to proceed with that procedure. Um, prayers for Ed Bush. Ed has been ha was hospitalized this past week at Riverside and came home last night. Um, but they asked that we would continue to pray for him. Reverend Frank Haas, I shared this morning, I did get an update uh, about Frank this week. He is in one of those full turtle shell braces. Um, he's able to walk, but struggles getting up and down. Has some other physical problems since his accident. Um, but one of the bigger concerns for him that was shared would be for his emotional and spiritual state as he's struggling with the, the loss of his wife, Elaine. Um, he just struggles with, you know, the whole everything combining at one time. So we'll continue to lift up uh, Frank Haas. Um, prayers for Judy Lang and for her extended family. Her brother, John Trinka, passed away yesterday morning. Um, I was asked before the service if she's home. I don't know what any of the arrangements or anything are at this point, um, but we would pray for Judy and for her family. I was also asked last night if you would be in prayer for my past church family. Um, they experienced two deaths yesterday, one completely sudden in involving all of them, involve uh, a lot of the people in the church and in the community. So Trinity United Church of Christ in Elliston, uh, I promise that we'd be in prayer for them. And 
I ask that you would be of encouragement as well. I have no other joys or concerns to share unless one of you would like to share in addition to what's in our bulletin. If not, we're going to begin a little different than normal. We're going to begin by saying the Lord's Prayer together, and then I will continue us in prayer. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Oh God, it is good to be together with your people in your presence, sharing together in prayer the words that Jesus taught his disciples and and the words and thoughts that come to our hearts and our minds. Oh God, we worship you and give you adoration and praise for the beauty of the world in which we live. As we witness with our eyes and our ears and the senses that you have given to us, the beauty and the majesty around us, we, we want to be children who are faithful in giving you praise. God, as you sit on your throne and you watch your creation at work. We know that you look and you declare that it is good and that you continue to work all things out for your glory and for your purpose. But it's evident too that you look down with sadness and discouragement at times with the world that we live in as we struggle for peace and unity as we struggle to, to, to simply love you with all we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us. Remind us of our forgiveness through the, through the ways that we forgive others. Help us to see just how much you love us when we show love to one another, even to the least of our brothers and sisters. God, if we pray for those that we've mentioned aloud in the names that are on our hearts, in our minds, printed in our bulletin. We ask that you would provide physical healing, spiritual comfort, emotional comfort to those who are grieving today. Help us to continue to, to show our love and affection through notes, through phone calls, visits, however we can reach out to to continue to build up one another. And God, we thank you once again for this day and this opportunity. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reflection is going to be some passage, some verses from the passage in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, I decided just to pull out some phrases and verses and put it together to make a shortened version of it. But let us be reminded again of the beginning of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was a light. Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. Let it be called sky. Let the water be gathered to one place, and let there be dry ground, calling them land and sea. Let the land produce vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it. Let there be lights in the sky to give light to the earth. Let them be called the sun, moon, and stars. Let there be living creatures in the water and birds above the earth. Let there be living creatures on the land, 
livestock, wild animals, and creatures that scatter on the ground. Let us make mankind in our image to rule over the animals. So God created mankind in his own image. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Last week, I began a series titled, Who is God? And if you were able to follow along, or if you watched online or were here last week, the, the first part of this discussion came from a story in Exodus chapter 3, the story of Moses approaching the burning bush and his encounter with the voice from the flame within the burning bush. We asked ourselves, is God real? Or another way of asking, is God really there? And we determined through the scriptures that God's word proves without a shadow of a doubt that God is truly real. And over and over it shows how God is present in the lives of not only the men and women in the Bible, but still active and alive in the lives of his people today. Even after the pages of scripture were penned, history has proven the existence of God over and over. Everywhere we look, we see evidence of God being a part of creation. He's never left us, and God is still present in our joys, in our pains, and in our sorrows. Today, I want to quickly share with you a little bit more about this God, our God, the God that we claim to follow, the God of our faith, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the real and the living God. And as I do so, I want to examine God's role in the creation of the universe from the beginning of time into how God is active and alive in today's world. As we watch life grow around us, as we witness the birth of more children in humanity, and as we see all the beauty that we get to see day in and day out. And as we begin, I want to share a story about a man who was an atheist. He was struggling to find out if God was real to him. This man was taking a walk one day through the woods, admiring all the accidents of evolution. You know, those majestic trees, the powerful rivers, the beautiful animals. He thought to himself, what wonderful accidents these are. And as he was walking alongside the river, he heard a rustling in the bushes behind him. And as he turned to look, he saw a seven-foot grizzly bear that was charging towards him. He ran as fast as he could up the path, and while looking over his shoulder, he saw that the grizzly bear was closing in on him. He tried to run faster and faster, but he soon began to get tired. Tears were streaming down his cheeks. His heart was pumping frantically as he tried to outrun that bear. And just then he tripped over a root and he fell to the ground. And as he turned to get up, he saw that bear hovering right on top of him with his arms as big as that rooster that we saw the other day just getting ready to swoop down and to devour the man. At that instance, the young man cried out, Oh my God! Suddenly the time froze, the forest was silent, the rivers stopped flowing, and a bright light, a bright light appeared on the man. And a voice from the heavens came and said, For years you denied my existence and taught others that I don't exist. You even credit my creation to a cosmic accident, as you take my name in vain. And now do you expect me to help you out of this predicament? And do I now count you as a believer? The man thought about it, and he remembered his pride, and he looked up towards the heavens, and he said, You know, it would be rather hypocritical of me to ask you to allow me to be a Christian after all of these years. But could you at least make the bear a Christian? Well, very well, God said. The light went out, the river started flowing, then the sounds of the forest returned, and the bear put down its paws. And as the man began to smile and breathe that sigh of relief, he saw the bear kneel down in front of him, bow its head, and say, Lord, I thank you for this food which I am about to receive. <laughs> well, I talk about that the rest of my house. If you have your bulletin or if you're jotting down notes, um, I shared this morning, I'm going to kind of move quickly through these notes, and if at the end I forgot to fill in the blank and you want to help filling in the blank on one of these answers, remind me and I'd be glad to do it. 
But as I began my review of, of God and, and the story of creation, several passages jumped out at me, including this passage from Genesis chapter 1 and 2, which most of us, if we grew up in the church, are familiar with, the creation of, of every aspect of this world through the creation of humanity. But passages like the 139th Psalm, Psalm 51.10, Ephesians 2.5, they came to light as well. So I put those at the top of your list for different passages for you to read, uh, whether later today or throughout the week, just to remind you. But these are verses among all the other verses in the Bible that remind us of who God is. The first thing I want to point out is that God reveals himself to us by calling himself the creator, by revealing to us that he is the creator. Creator is the first name that he reveals about himself in the Bible. Point two, from the beginning of the world, God has been alive and active in creation. From the beginning of the world, God, our creator, has been alive and active in creation. There are many theologians, there are many Christian men and women who have made the suggestion that God one day created the world that we read in Genesis chapter 1. And then he said, in the beginning let there be, and it all happened in those six days or the way you interpret it, it could be a literal six days, or it could be a period of time that felt like days. But they believe that what happened is God created the universe and then went away. That God now sits back somewhere in his cosmic universe and is watching the world unfold, letting things happen spontaneously, and that he's not active in it. I tend to believe different. Because as I read through different passages in Scripture, I see this God, the God that we claim is real, the God that we talked about in Exodus chapter 3 that, that was there in the life of Moses. I see him alive and active in the lives of the men and women of the Bible. But not just in the men and women of the Bible, but in the men and women that have existed since then. And even in my own life. And many of you can share examples of when you feel the presence of God around you. God is not this God that says, here I, here I am, I'm going to magnify myself by creating Steve, and then leave. And let Steve grow up to be what he... No, God is always there for Steve. God is always there for all of his children, allowing us to continually to grow, to provide his spirit, to make decisions that help us glorify him. Psalm 139, 14, the third point, all of God's creation is wonderful, including us. And it declares that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. All of God's creation is wonderful. Each one of you sitting here, each one of you watching online, God created you fearfully and wonderfully. Now, I asked my kids, they were here this morning, if they could tell what animals I'm afraid of. And perhaps you picked up on sermons or you were here this morning and you can share. Do any of you remember any of the animals I've listed that I'm afraid of? Lizards. Lizards. Snakes, bats, and roosters now, or chickens, not all. And there was this new animal that I learned about this week in, um, in Anna's schoolwork. It's spelled T-A-R-S-I-E-R. -E Some of you more educated people would probably know what that is, but we looked up the picture and it's like a koala bear with ugly eyes, and I'd be afraid of that thing now. But as I think about those animals, if I encounter them, my first reaction is to go, <laughs> and to scream and run around like a little girl, okay? Or a little boy, I mean, to be fair. I get, I get afraid of some of these animals, and I think, God, why did you create something so ugly? Think about snakes. How many of you like snakes? A couple, yeah. Some people can look at a snake and see the beauty of creation in a snake. I can't. But that's the, I think that's the beauty of God. He created all these animals, and he says, they're beautiful. Marion Dutzing, um, if you follow Marion on Facebook um, and a couple other people, they like to post these pictures of birds and other animals that are just beautiful. The feathers got different colors. and uh, I look at these pictures and think you can't even paint anything as beautiful as God's creation. But God makes all of this wonderful. And including that of his creation for each one of you sitting here. That means that God did not one day just wake up and take a little bit of this fluid, you know, like in a chemist, and go, boom, ooh, what did I just make when he made you? 
Now, I know that some of you probably feel like that when you look at the mirror or when you start to look at me. You know. But God didn't say that. He looks at each one of you and he says, you're beautiful. I created you the way that, you want, that he wanted. Note also that God created all things. The fourth point. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. I was thinking about that this the, the first service this morning, and the, this idea came up to me about a forest or a row of trees. If you if you live in a, such an area that you have all these trees, or you go out to an area and you look at them, I want you to stand there today, or whenever you see them, just stand there and watch all this wood, all these trees, and wait for them to turn themselves into a log cabin. Okay, you'll be there for quite some time. Because creation, the creator actually was the one that started. He was the beginning of creation. He created the hands, the people who actually design and build. Nothing can exist in this world without God the creator. Absolutely nothing. And within God's creation, he reveals his power. That's the fifth point. God's creation reveals his power. God's Hebrew name is Elohim, meaning strong one. Everything God did requires a little bit of his might and who he is to design and to create. And because of this creation, because of his power and, and what he has given to us, he reveals himself through his creation. No matter where you are, no matter where people are in this world, they could be in, the, in a jungle somewhere, they could be in the middle of an ocean, maybe they've never picked up a Bible. Maybe they don't have preachers, they don't have the internet to flood them with different options of watching each week. But through the beauty of creation, the Bible says that a man and a woman can see creation and know that a creator exists, that a God exists. And, and Paul says in Romans that this is so that no one is without excuse. No one can say, well, I didn't know that God existed, so how can I be held accountable? Well, Paul said that creation testifies that there's a creator. The last point is that God is continually creating and continues to knit his creation together. Again, from the Psalm 139, verse 14. God is continually creating and he's knitting it together. Any of you would like to knit blankets? Or, what's the other one? Crochet, that's where I couldn't remember this time. When you begin, you start with some yarn or some string. and It doesn't make any sense at times, does it? You don't even know when you start knitting. And you start crocheting sometimes what it's going to look like. Unless you have a pattern. But there's God knitting. He knows what the final product's going to be. And he's continuously putting together a masterpiece. So as he's continually at work in our lives, that means that he continually has a purpose for you. He didn't just create you and say, okay, it's over with. He wants every step of your life to be growth. To be spiritual growth. To glorify him. To show the world around him what love is to be like. To be instruments of his peace. I shared several weeks ago in one of our online sermons and also in a devotional that I had put online, this thought that I, I love. It captures this idea in my mind. G.K. Chesterton wrote this in one of his writings. He says, is it possible that God says every morning, do it again to the sun. And every evening, do it again to the moon. It may not be automatic necessity that he makes all the daisies alike. It may be that God makes every daisy separately, but has never got tired of making them. It may be that he has the eternal appetite of infancy. For we have all sinned, and we have all grown old, but our Father who is in heaven is younger than we. Can you see God getting giddy? That was the title of this devotion. The giddiness of God. I know when I do something, if I could cre create a drawing of a person that wasn't a stick figure, and it actually looked like who I was trying to draw, or the animal, I would get giddy over it. I'd get excited. Children, they get giddy, they get excited when they create something to give to their mothers or their fathers or grandparents, a, a gift of love. They get excited. And here's this picture of God getting all giddy. Everything he makes, the flowers each and every day, new life every day, and he's like, I did it again! The God of the universe, the creating God, creates you. 
and me. And he wants us to wake up every day looking at those new mercies that we see in life. To say, I got another day. Look, God's doing it again. But never take for granted the world that we live in. Never take for granted his creation. God gets giddy. We should as well. So why do I share this as part of this series of, of Who is God? This is not just for historical purposes for you to say, okay, Pastor Kyle, we agree that God created the heavens and the earth. We'll agree with you on the story of Genesis 1 and 2. You know, even if part of it, you know, however we interpret it, we agree with that. But what else does it mean for us? It means that we should take this belief that there's a creator that's active and alive in creation, and we should use that to glorify him and to worship him. That is why we exist. That is why we come together to worship, is to worship him and to give him thanks for everything that he has done and everything that he is doing and everything that he will do. We don't just come on Sunday mornings to be bored by Pastor Kyle. We don't just come because it's an obligation. We don't come just because, you know, mom and dad's telling me, gotta get up at this hour. We should be coming to glorify God, to give him thanks. Remember that God was giddy when he created you. Giddy each and every day as you grow up to who he wants you to be. So as you go, testify. Take that moment to, to pause and reflect when you see God's creation around you. At the beginning of the pandemic, COVID, right? I was, I was sharing this morning earlier, were you bored? Did you find yourself more bored at the beginning of COVID-19 than you are now? Maybe because we have a little bit more freedoms. But one of the things I did to try to pass time was to watch the birds in the side yard. And because baseball didn't exist, I created baseball in my mind, the Blue Jays versus the Cardinals. And if a Cardinal flew into the yard, they'd get a run. And if the Blue Jays flew by, they'd get a run. It, it was a good game until the Orioles showed up, okay? And they finished in last place as usual anyways, but I began to create, but I watched as Creation existed once again all around us. Not only were those birds flying around, but we saw them building the nests. And just the, the amazing, intrinsic ways of taking the, whatever they did, they, they don't have hands like us, but they can make a nest because they know that new life is coming. They know that their creator is going to bring new life and you're going to have little baby birdlings and all these little tweety things floating around. It's exciting to watch creation. But some of us look at creation and go, ah, there's another bird, I'm gonna poop on my window. <laughs> we should look at it as God's gift to us. We should thank God for all that he's given us. Pause and reflect. Worship. Let us pray. Holy and creating God, we give you thanks once again for today. We thank you for the beauty all around us. Never allow us to take it for granted, but when we see your creation, to stop and reflect on just how mighty and powerful you are. That you are Elohim, the creator, the powerful and strong one. Help us to always remember that this is not just a historical event, but it's a part of our everyday lives. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your creation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody confess, did you watch the first service, anybody? 
Who was here for the first service? Just you three, right? I asked this question, so don't cheat, okay? How many names for God are in the Bible? I don't know either. I was hoping one of you would all know. I know that there are a lot. There are a lot of names for God, especially the name Creator. So take that name, along with the name of Jesus with you, wherever you go. And may the peace and love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you now and always. Amen.